Hey, what's up everybody? Rich Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to jump into light gun gaming using the Sindin light gun on Botocera 35. So this is actually plug and play. So I'm going to show you guys how to set this up first, and then we're going to dive into a bunch of different games and game collections using the Sindin light gun so you can see exactly what the experience is like. So to kick everything off, we have to plug this in. So I've just booted up Botocera here. So I'm going to plug this directly into my PC, and I'll show you guys exactly how I calibrate this and get everything up and running. All right, so I just plugged in my Send and Light Gun. We should get confirmation on screen here. There it is, it says Send and Light Gun connected, and we also have that white border around the outside of our screen. So you can see my crosshairs are actually jumping all over the place. And this is, first off, right off the bat, the first thing that people complain about. There is a way to calibrate this, but it's an automated calibrating. So on the side of our gun, we have our D-pad. We're going to put, we're going to push on the D-pad left. So it's going to be, the um, arm that faces these two buttons in front. So we're just gonna hold that and hold it for about three seconds or so. It's gonna also scroll us through our collection. Uh, we could jump into our main menu if we want to not have that scrolling going on, but you can see the crosshair set to dead center. So I'm gonna just pull the trigger. And you can see I'm still bouncing around, but it's a little bit more stable. I'm gonna show you guys exactly why it's bouncing around. For this video, I have a light behind the camera. I also have a pair of overhead lights right above me. And that creates a glare on the tip of this. And you can see as I aim this at you guys, the glare of the lights above and the light behind here, that's throwing this off. So what you're going to want to do is at least dim your lights, but you're better off in all honesty, just completely shutting your lights down. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna shut the overhead lights off and I'm gonna dim the light behind the camera here. All right, so I'm kind of in the dark here, but now check out the movement on screen. It's a little bit better. It's not great though. So I'm going to hold down that calibration button again which is D-pad left, pull my trigger, and now look at the movement there, much better. Now it's not gonna be 100% perfect here, but let me try bringing the lights down. I'll actually just shut the light off completely. So now I'm totally in the dark for this video, which kind of sucks, but check out the movement on there now. Now it's perfect. Everywhere that I move it to, it's pretty much on point. So I'm gonna just calibrate this one more time here. Now that we have the lights turned off, pull the trigger, and it's even smoother now. So you can actually scroll your collections with your D-pad here, make selections with the buttons, but I find it easier to actually navigate with a separate controller entirely. So I have my regular gamepad controller here, and we're gonna jump into MAME to kick everything off. And we're gonna jump into Alien 3, the gun. I'm really familiar with this game, it's one of my favorites. So I've got my light gun out just gonna leave it pointed, um, you know, about dead center on the screen. And what we're gonna do here, it's gonna be different buttons for every collection, but for this one, it's gonna be the right-hand side. It's gonna be the button closest to you, and that's gonna to add to your credits, and then it's going to be on the left-hand side, the button closest to the end of your gun that acts as your start button. So we're gonna jump into this game now. We'll track the movement on screen, and this, um, down here, I forget what you call that, is going to be what we use for our grenades and like specials and all that stuff that we pick up along the way. So I'm a little bit close in this game here, uh, closer than I'd like to be, but for filming purposes, I kind of have to be a little bit closer so this works, especially with the lights being off, otherwise it's not going to focus properly. But you can see the movement here. Perfect, really tight, not overly loose or anything like that. Um, this is like the first time I've actually played this game where I'm not getting absolutely killed right off the bat here. Um, so now if I want to activate, I think it's grenades in this one, or like little explosives. If I want to throw one of those, I'm just going to cock back the, um, what would be how you would reload in some of the other games. So let me wait till we get a bunch of aliens here. So let me do that. So there we go. We drop those explosives by just cocking the actual light gun. We can do it again. So you see it tracks beautifully on here. And that again is due to me shutting these lights off. And I actually have some lights on over here. So uh, I noticed that it actually looks pretty good right now. I was noticing before that it gets a little bit off in the corner, which makes sense because the corner is where the uh, light over there is going to pick up. So all out of specials, but let me jump out of this game. All right, so I think we'll jump into actually Lethal Enforcers here, which is uh, probably the first light gun game that I ever tried with emulation on a Wii remote. 
So we're gonna just let this load up. We have those crosshairs kind of built into the load-in screens, so don't worry too much about those. Um, and I believe the buttons are different for adding credits here. So I'm just testing this out. Uh, adding credits for this one is right side closest to you, and start on this one is going to be left side closest to you. So a little bit different than what we had previously. Tracking on screen really nicely. Now this one's reload is shooting off screen, which I don't love, but we can actually change that in our settings if we wanted to. So let's see how this performs. Good so far, really nice movement here. Now we're gonna have to reload soon. So yeah, we can just shoot off screen. It actually tracks that really nicely. You have to get kind of a feel for it, but pretty good. Fast uh, response on here too. Yeah, so if you just kind of like do a quick shot like that. Let's get that power up going there. This is the smoothest I've ever had this game. This one's always been difficult because, whoops. Um, the reloading function like within RetroPie was always a nightmare. So um, I was spending too much time talking. That's my excuse at least. So that is Lethal Enforcers. Let's jump out. So I'm using, you can use this to navigate everything like I said, but I'm just using my gamepad controller. It's just so much easier for me to just hit the hotkey uh, combo on that and then exit out and I can jump in half the time to another collection. So let's jump into PlayStation 1. So in PlayStation 1 now, I'm gonna jump into Time Crisis, which is one of my favorite game uh, franchises. Um, we're gonna jump into Time Crisis Project Titan. And this one's gonna be a little different because we don't have crosshairs on screen to actually track. So we kind of have to get a feel for it, um, but it's not too bad to actually get into this one and get everything working properly. So um, same deal as before, you kind of have to play catch up with the uh, buttons on here and figure out what does what on here. So here we go, we got this little calibration built into the game and I'm not sure which button. So it's the button on the right hand side closest to the front of the gun that confirms the um, tracking on there and gets us into where we can actually dive into the game. All right, so here we are. And in order to come out of hiding here, we have to hit one of our buttons and it is the right hand button there close to the front. And that's how we reload. We just go back into hiding there. So the gun actually pulls a little bit left. You get used to it pretty quickly though. And there might be a way to actually get crosshairs on screen with this game. I have to spend a little bit more time on it. If we had those crosshairs on screen, then it would be much easier to actually aim. All right, so I'm getting a little bit used to it now. All right, so that was Time Crisis Project Titan. So I'm gonna get out of PlayStation and let's go into some Sega Saturn here. And now in Sega Saturn, there's a ton of amazing games. I'm gonna go into Virtua Cop 2, which is probably my favorite for the entire collection. So for this game, we don't have to do a whole lot here in terms of setting up. So for this particular game, I'm jumping right into it. We don't have to do anything in terms of setting up. It's pretty much plug and play. So we don't have to go in and remap anything. Um, I forget what the reloading situation is like on here, but we'll give it a go and see. Now there's no um, on screen. Yeah, so it's the talking motion here, I think. Yeah, so that reloads, which is awesome. Now there's no on screen crosshairs here, so you have to get used to that. Um, on screen tracking and kind of know where you're going to be, but you can see I'm already getting on point here with the shots. And I forget with this one if we can enable crosshairs on here. We might be able to. 
I know some of the games and game collections, you can actually enable those um, on-screen crosshairs. Alright, so I'm pretty much on point now with the aiming. It only takes uh, you know about 30 seconds before you really start to get a feel for it. And again, it would be even better if I was further away. I'm about three feet from my screen right now. And considering how close I am, it's pretty on point. And the only reason, again, I'm that close is because I'm trying to film this in a way where the focus is on point and all of that. So uh, also with me having to be kind of in the dark here, being further away would definitely um, be a problem. So missed that guy there. But tracking really nicely it's really a great experience here so i'm gonna jump out of this game all right so we're gonna jump into dreamcast and house of the dead 2 now this is the first time i've never jumped into this one on here so i want to see if it's truly plug and play really great movement on here the aiming here is on point uh it's definitely not pulling left or right it's exactly where i'm aiming how could anyone do this? You see I'm getting headshots every time, so it's Jeez. really on point here. I try. Don't underestimate the enemy. James, take this. All right, guys, you can see firsthand exactly how the Sind and Light Gun performs on Bodicera 35. Everything on here, super smooth. Love the fact that it is truly plug and play as they have advertised here. And the great thing about this is you have this reload function here, which I think is awesome. This cocking motion to reload in game. And you can actually remap. I didn't do that in this quick video here today. I didn't remap any of the reload functions to actually this motion here. Um, lethal enforcers we had to shoot off screen you can change that though so every time you want to reload you just do this but all in all really a great experience here you can certainly dive right into games without doing any remapping or anything like that and play them but remapping in some cases i think will better the experience overall so really happy with this though highly recommend it i'll put some links in the description of this video for you guys to jump over to and get some more information on these but that's going to do it for this video today if you found this video helpful and enjoyed the content here give me a thumbs up on the video it's a huge help to me here on youtube and of course hit that subscribe button to stay in the loop for all future videos here on the retro gaming guy youtube channel thanks for watching i'll see you on the next video